Good morning. You guys are awake. That's awesome. So my name is Matt Thompson. I am the uh, GM for Developer and Platform Evangelism for Microsoft. I have two jobs. My first job is actually looking after the developer ecosystem um, on the western part of the United States. And then I'm also responsible for the startup and ISV ecosystem across the US. And so one of the things that I've had the pleasure of doing over the last couple of months is, is traveling around the US, talking to a lot of phone devs. So I'm assuming everybody here is interested in writing apps or services on the back end for apps. Is that true? OK. Excellent. So I got a couple questions for you just to start with. Um, how many of you have an app running on either, uh, well, let's just break it down, on an iPhone device today? In Marketplace, yep. OK. What about on Android? What about on Nokia? Cool. What about on Windows, a Windows Phone 7 device today? Okay, great. So all of you that didn't raise your hands, are you guys just getting into the phone space? That's great. We'd love to have you here. Um, what? OK, there we go. I should have I said, yeah, thank you. So should have thrown in BlackBerry, although they feel kind of dead to me. Um, sorry. Um, anybody, and I, sh I should ask, there was, there was a, um, a BlackBerry dev event this week in the Bay Area. Anybody go? OK. Good, not good. What do you guys think? It was cool. There's hope. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's interesting stuff. And then what about what about? I mean, I, I almost hate to say it's Palm. Anybody? Okay. People are just gonna laugh. That's good. Okay. Uh, we got one. Okay. There we go. So um, I'm not gonna take too much time. Uh, so what I want to do is just kind of lay out why we're doing this. Um, and clearly, you're all here because you want to you wanna hear about this, this next generation phone platform that, that we're clearly really excited about. Now, one of the things is I, I want to I go back and talk a little bit about my background because I, I saw a couple, um, a couple people that I know here and I kind of want to explain what's going on. So I was at Sun Microsystems for 18 years. I actually ran the developer community for Sun. Uh, how many of you have actually uh, used Java on a mobile device or a backend service? Yeah. So um, thank you for that. We would love for you to continue to use Java potentially on the back end, maybe in something like Azure. Phones, much more modern now. And so what you're going to hear about today is a really, really cool client side and also get you starting to think about what you can connect to and the kind of services that you can build that will be really, really interesting. And so when we talk about Nokia and Microsoft going kind of walking into down this path hand in hand, it's because we think there's great opportunity. And, and one of the things that I hope you ask us about, we're clearly going to talk to you about, is what that opportunity is. And we're fully aware that we've got iOS and Android and platforms like that we're competing against. But if you look at the global opportunity that is represented by this partnership, we expect almost every phone dev on the planet to be interested in this. And that's what this is. This is clearly, this is not a regional opportunity, not even just a national opportunity. This is a global opportunity to get your apps and your content out in millions and millions and millions of consumers' hands. And that's what we think is so interesting about this. So I'm not going to take up too much time. The only other thing I wanted to say to you is that we are here. This is not a team that flew in. We've got people both on the Nokia side and on the Microsoft side, local to Silicon Valley. Just like curiosity, how many of you uh, drove within, you live within, uh, let's say, 50 miles of, of this site. Great. Local community. That's what we love. That's why we're here. Um, please engage with us. Anybody wearing a speaker tag or you hear it see up on stage, come talk to us. We'd love to answer your questions. This is about developing a local kind of Windows Phone 7 ecosystem. And we're really, really excited for you being here. Let me introduce one of my counterparts at Nokia, Chance Arrington, is going to come up here and talk to you a little bit about what that opportunity is. Great. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Good morning, guys. Uh, for those of you that I haven't met, I'm Chance Arrington. I head developer and content marketing here at Nokia for North America. And we're going to talk to you just a little bit about what this third ecosystem opportunity is. And it, it all starts with what Nokia has always been known for, and that's great design phones, quality products, long-lasting battery life, uh, exceptional quality. Exceptional quality leading to better phones. And what we're going to add to that with our partnership with Microsoft is amazing experiences. 
And uh, as, as all of you know, you know it's, it, it's all about the amazing experience. And Nokia has always been about connecting people. And this has kind of changed over the years. Originally, it was all about cell phone calls, and then it kind of changed to text messaging, and then some web services, and now applications. But this is really important for you as developers and how you reach out to your consumers. This is what we want to enable. We want to connect you back to the community that's developing or that's using your applications. We want to connect you to the person that's going to buy your game. We want to connect you to a million users, whatever the situation may be. Uh, so how are we going to do that? I'm going to run through just a couple quick things. And uh, this is a lot of information that a lot of people don't know. 2010, Nokia sold 100 million smartphones. That's not dumb phones. That's not uh, feature phones. It's not things in um, little, little phones in Africa. That's 100 million smartphones. That's 100 million customers for your content. Um, 260,000 smartphones a day. It's massive, huge. 190 markets globally. This is all about the reach. And that's what this, this whole day is going to be about. It's, it's developing your application and then turning around and figuring out how you can reach your consumers. 190 markets. That's, that's better than anyone else. 170 markets with credit card billing. Oops. This is also goes back to 121 op operators with operator billing. These are enablers to help you get, again, to your customers. This is about, you know, here in America, we often, you know, ha hand somebody a piece of plastic over cash any day. It's, it's about quick transaction. I can't remember the last time I actually paid for something with, like, actual money. I think I keep, like, a 20 in my boot or something just in case, but I haven't checked on it in a while. I guess I need to do that. But this is, this is about enabling the payment mechanisms that consumers need to get your content, whether that content's um, monetized through, you know, in-app purchase or... Uh, operator billing or credit card billing or in-app advertising, enabling you to reach your consumers and then make the money that you need. And then over 9 million downloads a day. This is what our current store is generating and what we're bringing to Windows Phone. Uh, so again, Nokia moving forward is going to be all about Windows Phone as our smartphone platform and helping you connect back to your customers, making sure. Now what we need you to do is take, in that, take that into consideration. You know, Everyone always talks about Nokia having billions and billions and billions of, of customers. Well, that doesn't happen by only developing for U.S. customers. You need to keep in mind that there's 190 markets that we're eventually going to be going into that need some kind of localization uh, of your application. You know, as an entrepreneur, as an application developer, that's your job. It's to figure out how to expand your reach, figure out how to get more customers, figure out how to get more people into your application. We'll provide the platform and the engagement and the store and all the mechanisms that you need, all the tools. But you guys have to make the effort to realize the opportunity there. And we're going to do our best to get that in front of you as well. So with that, I'm going to bring up a, a very special guy. Um, he's uh, Personally, I consider him the uh, purveyor of awesome and the uh, harbinger of excellence, uh, Mr. Uh, Brandon Watson from Microsoft. Thank you. Is it good? Guys, purveyor of awesome. Hey, that's the response I get for purveyor of awesome. Well, the harbinger. Well, is it? You know, it's harbinger of other things, sadly. But wow, that's okay. That's really loud. Okay, so uh, welcome. Uh, I know Matt uh, asked around how many people had Windows Phone applications market. I'm actually curious, just show of hands, how many people actually hold, have a Windows Phone in their pocket? Sorry, guys. So that's a good number of hands. Okay, good. Um, so that's weird feedback. So um, my name is Brandon Watson, and my job for better or for worse, uh, is to make sure that we have lots of developers on the platform uh, and that we're doing all the right things. We're building the right tools, uh, we're building the right platform, we're taking the feedback from the community, making sure that, that what we add uh, to the platform with the engineers is what you guys need to be successful uh, and making sure that the marketplace is what you guys needed to be to be successful and investing in you uh, so that we continue on our path to, to you know, mobile excellence. Uh, I was recruited in this job a little under two years ago. Uh, we started from zero, basically. We had to start over with Windows Phone. Uh, we've gone from last place to, I would say, a credible third place. Uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, next up, Google. I'll say that out loud. You're on my list. Um, but the reality is, is we're a platform company first. We always have been. Uh, and that's what makes us a, a little bit more, we have a bit more dog in the fight here. We understand what it is to empower developers to build everything. We can't possibly know everything that 
customers will want. So if we empower guys like you, gals like you, uh, to build great things on top of the platform, then it kind of expands our reach and, and makes it more uh, relevant. So let's just start with, with first uh, a couple of core principles. This is, uh, this is how I feel about things. I, I was asked by Andy Lees, our president, uh, you know, I was, said I wanted to go do something. He goes, yeah, but what's the return on investment? And I, and I wrote this on the whiteboard. The engineers in the room snickered. He didn't, didn't get it. Uh, but, but the more interesting bit was then the follow-on discussion. How many people actually think it should be dot happy as a property and not a bool returning function? Anybody have that? Yeah, that was a five-minute conversation in the room whether or not my code was FX cops uh, appropriate. And just kind of lets you know the kind of people in the room we're having these discussions. But uh, one of the core principles we have on my team is to be highly visible, highly available. Uh, so that is my phone, email, my Twitter address. Anybody ever wants to call, anybody ever wants to talk, that's what we're here for. We're here for you guys. We're not going to be successful uh, without you guys. Uh, and so we try to make sure we come to these events. We have, I think I was told, 5,000 people are watching online. So welcome online viewers. That's pretty awesome. Uh, and the th multiple hundreds of people that are here in, in the room. Uh, we're investing very heavily in events worldwide. Uh, we have close to, I think, 1,000 events on the books for the calendar year, kind of June, July 1 to June 30. Uh, and this partnership with Nokia is going to make that really important. And it's put on by guys like Joe and Matt and all of our field personnel around the globe, uh, meeting with developers like yourselves in rooms like these uh, to hear about your dreams. Uh, hear about what you're building and dig into the code and, and kind of really make your things shine. Uh, and so this is you know, one way to get a hold of us. If you ever want feedback, you ever see me on Twitter, uh, it's, uh, sometimes it's manning the ramparts and sometimes it's, uh, it's a little less, less quiet. Um, so if we think about the past year for Windows Phone, we, we launched the phone one year ago, which is kind of bizarre if I think about it because it just it's a big, long blur. Uh, and someone, one of the guys on my team gave me this uh, to kind of sum up how we feel about the last year because it is... It's going to get a little bit harder, right? It's getting, every time we, we move forward, it feels like a little bit harder, but I feel like we're leveling up, right? Uh, we have over 50,000 registered developers in the marketplace now. 50,000. It's a big number. We're really excited. I mean, we had zero 12 months ago. Well, actually, a little bit longer, 12, but, but about z 12 months ago. Zero. 35,000-ish, uh, depending on which, uh, which number you're looking at, apps in the marketplace. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, so we're doing a good job. We're moving forward, but we still have a long way to go. So this wolf is going to get just a little bit bigger uh, and a little bit more fierce. Um, you know, the, what follows here, I've got a few slides to, to kind of give the, the, we'll give it the marketing angle, I guess we'll talk about, um, which is, you know, why we're different and why it's important to think about Windows Phone when you're thinking about building your apps. You know, if you look at this set of pictures, if I actually, rem if I removed the Chrome from around the UI, uh, the average consumer walking into a Best Buy, the average consumer walking into an AT&T store would have a hard time telling the difference between the, the user experiences. And so when the iPhone came out, it was a, it's, it's a world-changing product. Let's give credit where credit is due. It's a fantastic product. Uh, but what has followed has been imitators, right? We chose to be different. Uh, when we created the Metro interface, we said we wanted to focus on people uh, and not icons, right? It's a very distinctive UI. It's a fresh UI. It's a break uh, from what people have seen on smartphones. Uh, and it's an opportunity for you developers to take advantage of the things that we've put into the, uh, into the operating system to stand out the live tiles, the constantly updating UI, integration with the hubs, right? the fast and fluid UI. All of these things are part of the developer platform for you to take advantage of uh, and, and hopefully stand out on the platform. Right. Uh, and so this is a, this is a slightly uh, grimier, this was supposed to go into a Steve B presentation, and it was the, uh, here's the idea, and then they came back and they said no. Uh, so we didn't actually progress past this, but it, it's actually a pretty interesting slide when you think about it which is, you know, how far have we come and how quickly, and I feel bad for the WebOS guy in the room that they're not yet at 25,000, so they get the question mark. But it was, what was the rate of progression of the marketplace, right? People forget with Android, because they say, oh, Android, they're, you know, the kingmakers and they're, you know, market leaders. They were nowhere for 18 months, right? I mean, it took them 460-ish days to get to 25,000 apps in the marketplace. It took a long time, right? And so one phrase we kind of say over and over again back in Redmond is what one company can do, another can do, right? Companies, uh, customers turn over their contracts every two years. People are always in the market for a new smartphone, right? So there's always opportunity. And if you look at the rate of progression of apps in our marketplace, we've actually moved quite quickly, and we're very excited about that. Uh, and and it, it actually tells a pretty good story. But more importantly, uh, we ran some code, wrote some code to go pull all the comments out of the, uh, uh, out of the, out of the uh, uh, marketplace about the top 100 apps and games and just make a cool little tag cloud of what people are saying about the apps, right? And if you look at the words that pop, you see great and awesome, fun, love, addicting, right? So these are very positive words, not things like suck, slow load, task manager, right? Things that you'd expect to see on other platforms, right? 
And so we feel very good about that because we give you the tools to be successful uh, and this is the feedback you get from customers. And then of course the Nokia partnership, huge deal. Uh, it was, when did we announce it? February, uh, right before Mobile World Congress. A lot of man hours went into making that happen. We were very lucky uh, and fortunate that they elected to work with us and maybe not with our competitors. Uh, I've spent more time in this building in the last year than I care to remember. Uh, but we're very excited about the partnership with Nokia and, and as Chan said, you know, worldwide footprint, right? Uh, the, the Android platform really took off when they had Motorola stand behind them and bet very big uh, with the Droid. We have that opportunity in front of us now with Nokia and we're very excited about what next week comes with Nokia World. For those of you who want to watch, uh, we'll be streaming it online uh, live at Nokia World's next week. Obviously some news will be coming. That's all I can say about that. Uh, and of course we have... Uh, uh, we have our other partners, right? We have Samsung, we have HTC. Uh, the specs of the Samsung Focus S just dropped today uh, on our blog. People are really excited. I can tell you from having used the device, you can cut cake with it. Uh, it is a very, very thin and very, very light device. You kind of pick it up and you're a little confused because you think there's no battery in it. So it's a, we got some partners making some great, uh, great devices. But most importantly, every developer matters. Uh, am I in the, what am I, am I in the, in front of this? And so if I keep doing this, you want me to go this way? So this way back, okay. They're heckling the guys in the back of the room. Uh, so every developer matters, every single one, right? So now these are, you know, the, now the gratuitous kind of marketing, really high gloss, pretty shots. It, you know, our UI is very distinctive and different. And when we think about the three columns and the pillars that we went after, we do want to put people first. Uh, and w how that relates to you as a developer is we have our hubs and the hub integration. And obviously the people hub uh, is one place where you can integrate using the live services. Uh, we've been able to integrate Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, Etc. And so we have the ability now to bring in additional outside services and that will expand over time. Uh, and also the ability to group uh, your friends and communicate how you want, when you want. Uh, and so for a customer that's huge value because it's not what app was I using, right? The integration with the, uh, the Picture Hub, for example. Uh, was I using Picasa? Was I using Photo Bucket? It doesn't matter. You just go to the Picture Hub and the list of apps is there. It's an opportunity for you to, again, be front of mind for your customers. Um, but also the uh, the uh, smarter way to app, I mean, look, we've had, what, 35,000 apps on the platform. We feel really good about that, but more are coming every day. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Metro and, and the way that people are taking advantage of the platform uh, to get deeper customer engagement. But pinning, uh, you should always look to uh, enable pinning with your app, uh, as well as live tiles, because that does drive massive increase in uh, customer engagement, uh, as well as driving live tiles with either background tasks or, uh, or live services in the back end. Uh, App Connect, this is a way that we're investing in you to get your apps discovered and make, you know, get you found from customers. Uh, and then lastly, the web. Uh, we have obviously a big opportunity with the web platform uh, for developers. It's the IE9 rendering engine. It's no different than what's on, uh, uh, than what's on the desktop. And uh, So we have that rendering engine available for you if you want to build web apps. Hey, that's great. We've got the web control. Uh, or you can build great HTML5 apps that render just fine using the graphics accelerator uh, inside of the phone. Uh, and so what that results in is just a beautiful phone. But where did we come from, right? How many people have heard the Metro kind of song and dance around Metro? Uh, a few hands. Okay, not bad. That's good. So uh, I was in China a few weeks ago uh, visiting, which if you haven't been, kind of a mind-blowing exercise. Ponder this for a second. It births, I was told, it births the, China births the population of Australia every year. Just think about that for a second. Um, but standing in the airport uh, in Beijing, and I needed to find a restroom, uh, I don't speak Chinese, I know Ni Hao, that's about all I got. Uh, character set, totally different. You can't parse the language at all if you don't have the ear for it. Uh, but somehow I was still able to navigate the airport. Why? Uh, because of the iconography, because of the signage, because over the years we figured out how to communicate across borders using pictures, using text, and doing so in a way that makes sense. Uh, and so we spent, our designers spent a few years traveling the world and really understanding the metro design and designing principles around uh, that design language and building a design language for the phone that we could then implement. So when people picked up a phone, it was a focus on uh, words and a focus on graphics and not the Chrome. There's no close buttons, there's no window frames, right? So it really is about clean and fast, right? It's open, it's very fluid. Uh, the reduction of the Chrome is very important, right? You get to focus on the experience and not necessarily uh, what the windows look like. Uh, and it's alive. Right? You see a lot of motion on the Windows Phone interface. You get the live tiles are constantly changing, flipping. You get the pivots and the panoramas. So everything is a moving experience. It's very important. And so with that, uh, this is one of my favorite pictures uh, that these guys have given me in the design team. It really lays out how Metro works. Everything ties together. You can move uh, from app to app because the data in some cases, especially with the first party apps, is shared. So you move from your people contacts to texting and from texting to making a phone call. But all that data ties together 
including third-party apps. It all ties together in a fluid way as opposed to running down the cul-de-sacs of your app icons uh, on some of the other platforms. And so uh, this is a really cool chart. I pulled this from, uh, from Brian Agnetta's uh, uh, talk at Build. If you haven't seen the Build sessions, they're online at uh, buildwindows, buildwindows.com. Is that right, Joe? Yeah, buildwindows.com. Um, but what he did was we have this golf app uh, that someone created. And he wanted to uh, show how easy it was to go from drawing to actual app, right? And so these are the actual hand-drawn uh, pictures that we made for this app. It was a sample app to show how great you can make the UI. Uh, to go from you know, hand-drawn, which you could do with Sketchflow as well, uh, and then go to the actual app. And so it's a beautiful experience, right? And I'm, I have some other uh, shots from other apps on other platforms, but it's a beautiful experience. And the whole point is that you can draw users in using what's native in the tools for you. And you've got this nice panorama. Again, lots of information. It's more of a, it's less, uh, it's more infographic and less icono uh, iconographic or iconographic. I never get that word right. But it's more infographic, right? If you think about an infographic turned on its side, that is what a panorama essentially is, right? And so it's a bit, the ability to present a lens on that data, draw your customers in, and guide them to, uh, to some destination. And so with that, uh, a couple of examples here of, of things that you can do when you're building on top of Windows phones, right? You, we want you to invite and entice exploration, right? The whole notion of the, the, the width of the panorama is you can see just a little bit of the pictures here on the, the right-hand side. There's a little bit of an edge. So it's inviting exploration, right? It's inviting your customer to say, oh, well, what's over there, right? And continue to move along. Uh, you can push boundaries, right? You can add different graphics. You can take, this is a newsreader, right? But you've got little pictures for newspapers and they actually are dynamic and they have the text and hey, that's pretty interesting. But again, it's, it's pushing boundaries of what's possible versus just a little newsreader RSS, you know, orange with the white lines kind of icon. Uh, or you can be really expressive. Uh, you know, this is a, a sample app that we did when we were looking with the Glee guys and, you know, this has video built in and it's, it's, it's all highly integrated, uh, multiple layers of presentment. Uh, and being, it, it is just a very expressive thing. Right? You've got the parallax of the panorama image in the background. You've got the foreground image that's moving. Uh, but as a customer, when you use this app, you feel like it's this great experience. It's this very fluid experience. And this is all very easy for you guys to build as well using the tools, which, uh, which Kenny and the rest of the guys are going to walk through uh, through the day. Uh, this last one I like to show, it's, it's never an app that saw the light of day. It was more of a proof of concept of things that you could do. And, and again, we want you to think differently. We want you to push the boundaries. We want you to think about how can you drive customer engagement to do things that you want them to do using the tools. Well, if you think about this, it's a, let, let's show your bank balance over time, uh, which is what that, the green line is, and, and your savings and whatnot. And so as the phone moves along the panorama, you can see the events of when I was spending money, depositing money, where I was, et cetera, and then ultimately lands you at the bank bench, right? So as you're moving through your bank balance, you kind of got your entire bank balance in a panorama, and then ultimately it's, hey, I want to go to the bank or I want to make contact with the bank. So it was a, you know, again, just think differently, right? What would a bank application look like if you had the full use of a panorama? Well, that is one way, uh, certainly, to do it. But more importantly, uh, you have the opportunity to tell stories. Uh, this is Amazon on uh, the iPhone. Actually, I don't, I don't know if they've updated it. This is probably, I don't know, six months old. Uh, but uh, if they've updated it, I feel bad. I don't want to get called out on Twitter, uh, which will likely happen. But this is, you know, this is the I iPhone Amazon app. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a good-looking app. It fits within the construct of how they want you to build apps. Um, but what we actually shipped is just a little bit a little bit more inviting, right? It's a little bit prettier uh, because, again, it invites that exploration. It has the flexibility of the panorama, the ability to make recommendations, a very visual pop to it uh, versus a, a slightly less uh, inviting and a bit more confusing uh, experience. Uh, and then, of course, live tiles. You know, we've talked a little bit about the live tiles. Uh, this is one of those things that, I, you know, I, I have to figure out a way for my team and, and our guys worldwide to, to really drive home the value of live tiles. Um, the apps that implement live tiles see far more user interaction than the ones that don't. Uh, I certainly look to pin only the apps on my start screen on my phone that have live tiles because I like uh, the pushing of information. Uh, Foursquare is a great one. They update the live tile to show me where I am. I've got to check in here today. That's the other thing I do. But I, you know, the, they show me where I am uh, versus the guy ahead of me and behind me and of my friends list. right? So it just kind of dynamically changes to let me know how I'm stacking. Hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, the very great marketplace app called uh, AppFlow, these are the guys that did Cocktail Flow, there's updates every day to have their icons that they show in their little swoop of, of apps, the tiles, changes uh, dynamically. Very, very cool. Uh, and so here's uh, examples of ways that you can do different tiles to drive integration for the same type of app. Right? You've got uh, the type of drink and you've got you know, the time of day or, or how many points you have. But you know, just think about how you can drive whatever interactions it is you want with your customer using live tiles, because that's things that you can drive dynamically using the background 
uh, tasks, which we'll talk about how to do that more later, or even driving it through the push notification service on a, on a more uh, continuous basis. Uh, and, and of course, you know, any geeks in the room? George R. R. Martin, anybody? All right. So Metro is coming. Little Windsor is coming. Not there, but so uh, you know, Windows Phone is great. Metro is on Windows Phone, but if you were at Build or saw the Build stuff, you see Metro is going everywhere. Uh, it's going to end up on Windows 8, eventually on the uh, on the Xbox. But Metro really is uh, the driving design principle. So what does that mean for you? It means you have the opportunity now to become the experts. You have the opportunity now to build apps that people buy today. You have the opportunity to figure out what works and what doesn't, what customers will buy and what they won't. And then guess what? When we start shipping the other platforms, they're going to have the Metro user interface and the same tools, same language, same everything. Right? You will be able to take advantage of that. You have that first mover advantage. So the people in this room actually and the people listening online have a unique opportunity to become those experts. Learn what works. Because it's only by trial and, hour, trial and error, releasing early and often, that you will figure out what's going to work for your customers. And then you can carry those skills over to building from PC, tablet, and you know, for the Xbox, for the, the game developers. Right? It's a very unique opportunity. A very unique opportunity. We don't want you guys to miss it. So a little bit about the dev platform and kind of what, you know, what we're trying to do. Obviously, we want customers to have a great experience. right? The ability to buy apps, pin them, tile them. Uh, live tiles, etc. But we want them to have lots and lots and lots of apps. And you know, my job was largely gated by the app count. Uh, it was a running kind of daily number chasing thing that we, because that's when you're new and you're a startup. We treat my, our team like a startup. Uh, you're looking at that number every day, and now it's gotten to a point where we can kind of look at it on a weekly basis and feel good about it. But it definitely is a, it was a concern. Uh, people questioned whether or not we would be able to build an app ecosystem. And I feel really proud of the work that people in this room have done who've already released their apps. Thank you for that. Uh, and the people around the world who have released apps. We've had you know, many, 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 many thousands of apps, uh, and it will just continue to grow and thrive, and hopefully we get that ecosystem just on, a, on, a, on rails. Uh, but we also need to get you paid uh, and get you noticed, right? And that's dependent on sockets, right? We need to sell some more phones. We understand it. We've heard it. Uh, we have developers making money. We'd like you to make more money. A partnership with Nokia is going to really help there. Uh, they're making a big bet on us, and we're making a big bet on them. Uh, again, Nokia World is next week for anybody who wants to watch live streaming and find out what uh, Mr. Elop is going to announce. Uh, and of course, cloud experiences, right? The phone is tied to the clouds. Hopefully it's tied to Azure if you're using Azure services, but if not, no big deal. That's fine. As long as you're building apps, that's cool. Uh, because you know, we know that you're going to build all your services running on Windows Server and AWS, of course. Uh, but we do want you to drive these great web-enabled experiences, right? You're able to drive dynamic experiences using the content of the web. So you should definitely think about that. Uh, there are certain experiences, games, and a lot of times don't necessarily need to leave the phone, but there are games. A great one that I talk about all the time is Wordament. Uh, I've just ruined your afternoon if you've never played Wordament. Uh, it's, a, it's like a boggle, but it's online, and it's a two-minute game, and it's, you know, it's all driven through the web, and you're playing with these people online uh, all the time. It's, just, it's a great blending of, of the web and the, and the local dynamic, uh, the local uh, processing power on the phone. I'm sure Kenny's going to do this. One. I'll just skip over this. But, um, yay, great tools. We're awesome. Um, so so uh, Marketplace, uh, we've made a lot of changes to Marketplace uh, to really get you guys noticed. We've got search, obviously, improved. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few more things. Uh, the trial API, this is another one that people aren't using enough of. It's a little bit confusing. Maybe it's a vestige of the iOS developers uh, thinking they need a light version of their app and a not light version of the app. Use the trial API. It drives conversions. Uh, it means you only have to publish your app one time and not twice. Uh, and we're the only platform that has it, and it's really, really, really simple to implement. Uh, so the trial API is there for you, so you don't have to have multiple code trees. Uh, please use it. Um, and then the updated portal, is a, it's a really, really, it's a much better experience now. You can get all your royalties, et cetera, from one, uh, and track all your apps from one screen, which is really nice. But you know, the trends that we're seeing, uh, you know, we're adding about, I think it's about 150 new apps a day. We spike up above that sometimes. Anyone who was watching the marketplace in the last couple of weeks, they saw 600 plus from one publisher. Uh, it was an e-books guy, but that they all landed at one time. But we, about 150 a day. We feel pretty good about that, but we want it to keep going. Um, you know, the, the, the numbers that you're probably going to care about the most are, we see about 12 downloads per user per month. Uh, the trial to paid, about 10% convert rate. So I mean, if you think about that, uh, you, 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 know, you get 10 trial downloads. Uh, people are more likely to download if it is a trial app, meaning it's free, they don't have to pay for it, they can take a chance. And about a 1 in 10 rate of conversion. That will change over time as people figure out what it is that will entice people to bite on the trial. But 10% is actually not bad. Uh, if you think about most freemium models, they plan for 1% conversion rate. Uh, so 10% is not bad. Uh, MO billing is going to start coming. We have 50% of our users have it, but of course, Nokia and the relationships we have there it will just continue to grow. Uh, and the percent of paid downloads at 3.2%. Uh, we hope to keep pushing that up, of course, getting you guys noticed and getting you paid. 
Uh, we also have new distribution options. Uh, we've got the normal uh, marketplace, which is public, but we now have two, which is targeted and beta. Uh, beta is for people who want, you know, hey, I want to release my app to a limited group of people. I'd like to get feedback on my app before I put it in the marketplace. Uh, it is an ACLED control list, uh, and it is time expired, but you have the ability to say, hey, here's my group of people. I'd like to get them my app ahead of time and get feedback. It was a common complaint we had from developers. They weren't able to get feedback without releasing the marketplace. Uh, and then targeted, which is, hey, uh, you have an app that you want to be able to update uh, and get to a targeted set of users uh, and can be paid, meaning a limited release. Um, you can do that now as well. The, the, uh, the URL is hidden. It's not publicly available, but you can send it around by email. Uh, so again, it's, it's listening to our customers and giving you more opportunities to monetize your apps, improve your apps, uh, and be better uh, custodians of your customers. So the last little bit here that I've got is, is how we're investing in you, all of you and all of you online or as I was told by the now I'm in the shot, you online. Um, so first and foremost, uh, discoverability. This is one that uh, I'm not sure people get yet. Some people understand not. I want to talk a little bit about it, which is App Connect. Uh, App Connect uh, was the brainchild of our engineers, and they said, hey, how can we work with Bing to surface apps? Seems like a pretty innocuous question, but uh, it turns out uh, when I'm doing a search for whatever, a restaurant, uh, I'm thinking about getting all the way through to the restaurant. Right? But I may be looking for, I don't know, directions to the restaurant. I may be looking for reservations to the restaurant. I may be looking for the menu. There's any number of things I may be looking for that it turns out an app might be able to help me uh, finish that task. And so when you think about how App Connect works, uh, you do a search in Bing. Let's, for example, you do a search for Xbox. Uh, and the Bing results come back. Now, Bing productizes information. We've got what's called product cards. We have the web information, but also product cards, uh, which is what you'll see here, these, these product cards. We have them for uh, people, places, and things. Uh, and so if you select one of those, you'll get information. That's where we aggregate the information, the about, the reviews, the pricing, et cetera. But as you do a pivot across uh, the top, we have the apps. Now, there's two types of apps that will get surfaced here. One are the apps that are installed on the phone, and two is a list of apps that Bing suggests that you will want. So think about that for a second. Right now, I do a search, Xbox. Oh, that's right. I have the Amazon shopping app. I don't have to go to some website. I already have an app from a, from a developer that I trust. And if I tap on that app, I can process the query string. Oop, going the wrong direction. It can process the query string and jumps right into the part of the app, deep linking in to service that query. So you as an app developer now have the ability to integrate with Bing search results and process those query strings. So for OpenTable, for restaurant product cards, it can drop you right into the reservations page for that restaurant. So this linear task completion uh, is very, very important. And we, one too many. Uh, it's very important. It's one that we want to see more developers take advantage of, right? This, the power of Bing, right? Over time, we may look at things, how we do the promotion of the apps within that search result list, how we do the ordering. All of that will evolve over time. But the most important thing is we're investing in ways to get you noticed. It's not just about, oh, gosh, where was that in the list of icons or the grid, and I swipe, and I swipe, and I swipe, and I can't find that one app I was looking for. This is, I did a search for a product, and oh, yeah, this, cost, this company that built an app that I love that can service this query. Let me tap on that and go finish what I was doing there. Right? So again, getting you guys noticed. Um, we're investing in searchability, the marketplace. We've really made some improvements here with the searching. Uh, more importantly, on the web marketplace itself, you have the ability to uh, look, at the, look at the reviews, obviously, worldwide. Uh, but the most important thing is, which I'll jump to here, you now can buy from the web and send the app right to your phone. So it's over-the-air purchase. Uh, it's very, very cool, a little known feature. Which I, uh, which I love to use because I'm constantly flashing phones, is you can actually uh, go into the My Phone section of the windowsphone.com uh, marketplace and push all the old apps that you had installed on your phone back out to your phone. So if you lose apps or forget them, you can actually push them out over the air. But again, this is how do people search for and then push the app to the phone as opposed to relying on them doing a search on the phone. They can now do a search at the website, uh, purchase the app, and it will show up uh, right away on their phone, which is pretty cool. We're investing in more locales. Uh, I think we're adding 16 total languages, 16 new languages. Yeah, so 16 new languages that we're adding. Right? So again, this is getting phones in front of more customers, giving you the ability to sell worldwide. Uh, localize your apps. There's lots of localization services out there. If you build your apps right and use resource files, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, but we're opening the door to lots of new markets. And beyond just the new phones, you can publish your apps to more places. Uh, we're now in 35 uh, countries. So we've got 19 uh, new ones that we've added since launch last year. Uh, as well as publishing from more places. Uh, we're at 30, uh, 38 countries in total that you can publish from. The three that you can't, actually, this is not up to date, because China is still listed as you cannot, but you, know, you can actually publish from China, so that's fine. 
Yeah, China's actually did update. Um, so China just went live yesterday or two days ago uh, for app ingestion, uh, which is great. We're really excited about that. So uh, China, Luxembourg, and Israel are the three that don't have commerce yet. Obviously, those are coming. Uh, but 38 countries now support uh, primary app ingestion. If you live in one of the countries that doesn't support it, we have plenty of third-party partners like Apple Mundi in the UK. Uh, they service Europe and Yala apps in the Middle East uh, that will help you if you're a developer uh, publish apps. So lastly, uh, what makes a great app? Right? We're going to talk more about in depth how to do these things, but if you think about what it takes to build a great app for Windows Phone, one, invest in live tiles. We cannot underscore this enough, invest in live tiles. It drives customer engagement. It drives customer interest. It reinforces your brand and it gives the appearance that you're doing work for them. Invest in the live tiles. Hub integration. Make it easier for customers to find your app. If you're a photo app, integrate with the photo, uh, the photo hub. Right? If you're a music and video, integrate with music and video. If you're a game, integrate with the games hub. Right? But this is an, another way for you to make sure that you stay front of mind for the customers. Uh, push notification services, uh, the, the toasts and whatnot. We give you that service for free. You can take advantage of it. Uh, you can also use the notification services locally on the phone using background tasks. Either way, we're investing in, again, opportunities for you to keep current with your customers. Communicate with them. Get them information that is of relevant uh, value to them. Uh, start screen pinning. Again, this is the live tiles. Make sure that it works. Uh, the app connect integration we talked about, this is, this is a huge uh, opportunity, likely to be abused by some developers at some point. We'll figure out how to vet that over time. But it, it's a huge opportunity for developers to, again, get noticed. Um, and the location services, uh, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb here uh, and say location services on mobile phones is likely to be big. Just a guess. Uh, but it's something for you to take advantage of. And we've got pretty good local uh, location services APIs built right into the phone. Uh, and lastly, make sure your apps update. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really easy to do. You push a button, the app updates. Uh, and it's a great experience for customers. Take advantage of it. Um, so I think I'm over on time. Uh, you know, key resources create.msdn.com, go get the tools. If you haven't gotten the tools, shame on all of you. Uh, if you have gotten the tools, thank you. Uh, but get the tools. We have lots of training. We're constantly investing in training for you. We have 14 hours of jumpstart training that was done by uh, Rob Miles and Andy Wigley, two of our MVPs in the UK. We have 10 hours of training. It's called the Absolute Beginner Series. If you've never written a line of code and you're on one of the guys online, uh, never written a line of code, great. This is, you know, start there. Uh, we constantly have events like this, which we're recording, making available online. We have training courses, we have slide decks, we have all, so much content online because we know that we must invest in you. Uh, and I actually challenge you to find that content uh, at some of the other mobile platforms and what they're doing to invest in you, to make you successful. Um, so that's it for me. Uh, I'll be around all day, uh, as, as Joe, uh, Matt said. Not everybody flew in, I flew in, sadly. Uh, but I'm here all day uh, and I'm here for you. Uh, so if you have a question, a burning question, you wanna to talk to me, that's what I'm here for, I'm here for you. If you don't get me today, call me. Uh, and we'll talk uh, because this is the most important thing I do is making sure that you guys are successful. So that's it. Uh, have a great day today. Learn lots of stuff about Windows Phone. Get pumped. Uh, and hopefully we'll see your app in the marketplace soon.